hope that you allowed us in your home again. And we just want to say that we love you and God loves you. And we're gonna, we have an exciting show to share with you today. I have with me today, Pastor Tracy Boyd. Tracy and her husband James pastor Grow Church in Naples, Florida. Since the church began in 2011, it has been known for its generosity, its life-giving culture, and the tangible presence of God. Pastor Tracy has a deep passion for discipleship and developing leaders. She speaks at conferences and has authored Live Again, What's in Your Mouth, and Proactive pa Parenting. She also spearheaded the founding of Grow Church School of Ministry, which is a life-changing ministry training organization that not only teaches theological content, but boots on the ground ministry leadership, systems, and organization. She is best known for taking dynamic truths of the scripture, coupled with her life experience, into a re relevant application of everyday life. She is passionate about sharing with uh, her methods of success with others and helping people to develop their God-given potential. She also ministered at our conference. She is a blessing and she's going to be quite a blessing to you today. So welcome, Tracy. We're so, so happy to have you. Honored, honored to be here. It's great to have you here, um, and it's great to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, it's our first ever. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes it is. So uh, we want to address a couple questions first, and then we'll get into what we want to talk about today. So the first question is, I dealt with my husband in porn for almost 20 years. I'm che I've checked out of our marriage now, and I'm seeking a divorce. Am I biblically correct? Well, what basically, we, I don't like to answer questions like that because that's something that you need to come in and you need to see your pastor or see a Christian counselor about right. so that they can get the whole story and they can tell you uh, the best route to take. The other thing is that the fact that you asked if you were biblically correct tells me you do not have peace. And whenever you think about ending a marriage, you have to have peace about it. You, you cannot um, run into doing something totally different that's not going to give you peace or that's going to destroy any peace that you have. Absolutely. That's good. Did you want to add anything? No, to that? that's, that's great. Okay. That's great. I would have answered the same way. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one is for Tracy. I am a recently widowed Christian woman, and I keep giving, uh, getting this question asked frequently by friends and even by my, my seven-year-old grandson. And that is, will I date? When is it appropriate? When is it an appropriate time frame to date? Uh, and uh, the reason why, obviously, Pastor Deborah asked me this question is because I was widowed in 2002, so um, went through the whole process. And so, um, I, I can tell you from my own experience that um, every person is different, but the time frame really is about whether or not you've healed and uh, I was so blessed when I walked through my situation that your husband really walked me through mm -hmm. the full healing process and um, I remember him saying to me this is going to take about two years mm -hmm. and um, it was it wasn't two years um, just shy of two years I can still remember the place that I was mm -hmm. when the Lord said your healing is complete but the reason why he said your healing is complete is because of what I was doing mm -hmm. in that time frame. I did not, I, I didn't know to go to a, a Christian counselor. I didn't see any books in the library or at bookstores that talked about healing over grief. But I did spend a ton of time every single day in the presence of God yes. and, and in the Word of God. And what happened is the Lord was doing a secret work on the inside of me that I wasn't even aware of. And I think that's why for me, when he said your healing is complete, because there had been enough time to be in his presence to allow the healing. Right. I was literally a mess. I, I can remember even that, uh, that first three months after he had passed. Uh, typically for me, I've got, I'm the type of person where I can have five or six pans going at the same time and just keep going. Right. That's typically my personality. Uh, what, what I can accomplish in a day is, is even my girls, are they're just absolutely astounded. 
But in that season, just getting up to go to the grocery store was more than I could handle because that's how raw and broken and feeble I was. So I started so feeble and it took that time in his presence and in his word. And, and I don't even think you, rem maybe you remember this. I actually sat in, in that healing period, I sat in on one of your Bible school classes. Mm -hmm. uh, Bishop said, just go, just go sit there. Yeah. Again, he understood, just get bombarded yes. and let the Lord heal you. Exactly. And do you know some of the things that you shared in those few classes that I, that I um, took, that um, not only did it impact me, but watch this, now it's impacting my daughters because mm -hmm. I, I just passed it right on to my adult da daughters who are now in that dating season, right. which is absolutely crazy. So first the Lord said, um, your healing is complete, which came out of letting the Lord build my security in Him alone and not, because you know, my, my, in my first marriage, He was my life. I mean, mm -hmm. we were just inseparable. He's my first for everything. So the Lord first had to do a work in me before he could release me to actually move on to someone else. Right. And then when, when we did start dating, it was under, again, great accountability and supervision of Bishop, other pastors that were in our life. We had a great accountability we submitted mm -hmm. to, and we actually said, if anybody has any um, red flags, we'll stop. And so I ended up marrying the man who everyone heard from the Holy Spirit that he was the one for me. So there was healing, and then there was accountability. And if you have those two things in place, right. now you're ready to actually go forward. Exactly. Amen. So, um, yes, you do need to make sure that you do have those available, um, and you have the peace of God to move forward. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. Our next question is, can you speak to the woman who has spouses in prison? Often ministries focus on ministering to those in prison, but they forget to minister to the spouses of those incarcerated. Okay, sweetheart. The reason why they, I don't want to say forget to minister to, your, to the spouses is because you're not locked up. Go to a word church. That's good. Get involved with other Christians and let them love on you. Mm -hmm. You do not have to be in a place where you have to tell everybody your business. But you need to be around the church. That's not, it's not like we're forgetting to minister to you. You have the ability to walk to church or to drive to church. Mm -hmm. Your spouse doesn't. He, right. They're locked up. Mm -hmm. So that's why the ministries that minister to them minister to them. Mm -hmm. But you need to make yourself available when that's you right. come to church and you sit under the word right. and you grow because you need to grow. You need to get in a place where you grow, where you don't need the ministry as a specialty spouse, you need the ministry because God loves you and God wants you to grow. That's right. That's good. So you need to come in, get, just get into a church, find a word church, somewhere that's going to teach you the word and um, grow and be the successful person that God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. Our next question is, what do you do when you still want sex and your husband is not as interested as you? you definitely need to come in for counseling. Absolutely. Because, you know, when we, when we do marital counseling, we need to get both sides of the story. And even if we can got, not get the other spouse to come in, when we get you to come in and sit down with us, we can at least get you to be honest about what's really happening. Mm -hmm. Whether you agree with how he or she is responding or not, at least you'll be honest about, well, they said this. But we can't do that over, over a video or um, over the internet. So we need you to come in either to, uh, you need to find your uh, uh, word church. Um, you need to go on and talk to your pastor or somebody that your pastor has assigned. Or you need to find you a Christian uh, counselor mm -hmm. and go in and talk to her or him so that uh, you can get the counseling that you really need and not us trying to guess what you mean. Because there's a root. Yes. Obviously, there's a reason, and um, I don't think that reason can be discussed in just one right. session like this. It cannot be. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no way we can, you know, we, we're not psychics. <laughs> so we can't <laughs> guess or say, well, this is what's happening. Right. 
Right. No. Uh, and God doesn't tell us everything. He don't tell us everybody's business. So, yeah, you need to come, uh, come in for counseling or go in for counseling somewhere. Praise God. Amen. I hope you will. What should I do if I have an abusive husband? Counseling. Wow, you need to go in for counseling and you need to tell somebody what's going on. We need to know your, what your, for instance, what is your, what kind of abuse are you experiencing? Is he hitting you? Is he just abusing you verbally? Uh, we need to know what's going on so we can counsel you on what is particularly happening in your life. Uh, I, we can say that God does not expect you to be beat on. That's right. Uh, but we, wanna, you, we want you to come in for counseling because we want to make sure that you understand that you're doing the right things that you need to be doing. That's right. And then, you know, you can make a decision on where to go from there. Amen. We love you, and we just want you to uh, have the best possible counseling that you could possibly get. And we, it's kind of hard for us to do it. My husband and I are, are being depended upon to raise or to help raise two children. I'm having mixed feelings about this. Please advise on anything that will help me. Thank you. Okay, so this again, I hate to sound like a cop out, but you need counseling. <laughs> um, first of all, for me reading this question tells me that you haven't discussed this with your husband. Now, I could be wrong, but the way the question is written, um, you're having mixed feelings about this. Um, whose children are they? Uh, how much help is expected? So you, you need to come in or go in and talk to someone so you can answer those questions because we cannot, we cannot justifiably fiably counsel you on this based on the, just based on the question. There's some questions we have to ask you about the situation and then we can go from there. Um, and if you go in and see a counselor, they'll be happy to help. I'm pretty sure they will be happy to help you. So go in and seek the counseling that you need because no one needs to be in a situation where they feel uncomfortable. That's right. So we need to just, just talk about it. And um, communication is not communication if it's not understood. That's really good. So you need to go in and, and let somebody counsel you that can talk to you and find out exactly where you're coming from so they can help you on exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. And that's available. And you just have to do some research and find the right source. Amen. And I believe that is um, the, the question, all the questions we're going to address today. Uh, but I did want to go back on something that that uh, Tracy said um, and that was um, the Lord said to me yesterday I was I was driving and the Lord said to me he said the reason there is no sickness and sadness in heaven it's because they are constantly in God's presence That's right. and then he said to me the more you time you spend in his presence the less sickness and sadness you will experience. Now, to me, that's like, that put it right back on, the shoe right back on my foot. Mm -hmm. Because we're so used to saying, well, God, why you let this happen? Why, why is this going on? What is this? Whatever. But we never take responsibility for what's going on. And so what it says to me is that the more time you spend in God's presence, the more time you will experience uh, no pain, no sickness. Because it's not like God has to heal us. He already has healed us. Mm -hmm. So now in order to get benefit, we have to get close to him. That's right. Uh, Tracy. There's that scripture, a um, couple of scriptures I've been personally meditating on, um, where he says in Psalm 16, it says, in your presence, mm -hmm. we know it says it, there's fullness of joy. But yeah. also in his presence, there's fullness. Yeah. You can end it right there. Yeah. So whatever it is that you're needing or, or lacking, he's saying in his presence, mm -hmm. there's something available. And there's a transfer, just like when we 
when we begin to dialogue with someone that we're in, that we're close to, or you have coffee, or um, you, you spend some time with maybe a friend that you've been uh, friends with for 20 years, or and you get together, maybe you'll mm -hmm. share a cup of coffee, and, and, and you'll share back and forth. When you leave that time, there was a transfer that happened. Yes. Something impacted you. It happens in the negative too, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you're in a situation where uh, there was pain or, or a negative spirit or mm -hmm. just critical, whatever, offended, that, that rubs off on you too, yes. right? But there's a transfer. If, if we understand that there's a transfer when you and I communicate, mm -hmm. I walk away filled and edified and you know, ready to take on the world, that's what it's supposed to be like in the presence of God. Yes. Where we go and we recognize His mercy is new every morning. His grace is unending. He always has so much that He wants to pour. But so often, yeah. we need a, He needs a touchdown point. And so when we go to his presence for the sole purposes, I need you. And I'm just going to wait here because I know that you're good. I know that you're merciful. And really by faith believe that there is that yes. transfer. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't think of how many times where I've, I've woken up in the morning. And you know, there's some mornings I just pop up out of bed sometimes even before the alarm. But then there's there other mornings, maybe after like a conference night mm -hmm. where... Um, <laughs> You know, you wake up and you're like, oh my God. Or maybe the night before, um, I had maybe a, a tough meeting and it wasn't resolved yet. And you, know, you wake up in the morning and you think, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Right? Your mind just starts going. Mm -hmm. What I have found, if I can just immediately grab my coffee, of course, and get into the presence of God within just 15, maybe even 10 minutes, I can just feel all that wash away. I'm in His presence and now He's taking care of it, right. not me. So there's, I think that we underutilize yes, we do. the presence of God when it's so available 24-7 mm -hmm. for us to just drink and access and to, to stay in that place of both mental health and physical health. Yes, yeah. He's constantly there. He's with us all the time. So if He's with you all the time, who are you with? That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's you good. know, so you just have to pick who you're going to spend your time with. Someone who is constantly taken from you or someone who just wants to give. Mm -hmm. That he loves you so much that all he wants to do is give to you. Yes. yes all he yes. wants to do is make things easier for you. Yes. All he wants to do is just spend time with you. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a choice like that. We all have choices like that. So why aren't we making the right choices? There's a lot of people, a lot of Christians, that are going through some unnecessary pain, some unnecessary grief, That's some right. unnecessary things, because you won't give it to God. That's right. And That's he's right told on. us to cast all our care on him mm -hmm. because he cares for us. But we don't believe it. And the reason I say we don't believe it is because we don't cast the cares on him. Now, I don't know anybody who wants problems. Everybody wants easy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't hold that against them because I want it easy. <laughs> but, you know, nothing in good, not, not, nothing, li nothing in life that's good comes easy. No, it doesn't. We nothing. have to, you know, but it comes easy for us if we give it to God. Absolutely. If we give it to God, that's what our easy is is that we're giving it to God and we're not trying to fix it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we try to fix it ourselves, you know what? It gets worse. It sure does. It just gets worse. Mm -hmm. But when you give it to God, you don't even have to think about it anymore. He's got it. He's got it. I think the giving into God, I think that a lot of times I see uh, Christians um, that they're so busy, they're so busy, they're just running, 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 Okay, I'm giving it to God, but then I'm going to go off and do this. No, no, no. When you give it to God, mm -hmm. there has to be that moment where you're just resting in His presence and saying, I'm giving it to you. You know, what's happened over the years in my personal time of the Lord, it's I get to be in the presence of God. I get to be. We have this amazing mm -hmm. opportunity to be in the presence of Almighty God Mm -hmm. and experience this transfer. We have to literally 
get rid of all of the lies. Well, I've got this to do, I've got that to do. You've got nothing better to do than be in the presence of Almighty God and let Him do that supernatural work that only He can do. So we go without because we're not resting in His presence. Right. We're just, okay, Casper, Carol, I'm running. No, 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 just let Him love you. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes time for love making. Yeah. If it's love making, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It takes time. Yeah. It takes time to just be in the presence of God and let Him do the fresh work every day that He so desires to do in our hearts. Yeah. Let Him tell you how much He loves you. Let Him express it to you, and you express to Him how much you love Him. And that's what it. And that's what spending time in His presence is. It's just letting Him know that you know that He's your everything. Yes. There is a song that I've been hearing the couple, last couple of days on the radio. And when I think back to the first time I heard it, I was like, I don't know if I like that song. But after what God said to me yesterday, and the song, I, I believe the title of the song is, because I'm driving, so I, I took a picture of it today. Uh, but I'm driving, so I believe the type, title of the song, Why Not Me? Or no, Why Not I? And she talks about all the things that's happening in her lives, in her life, and but she, and then she talks about, but why me? Why is this happening to me? And then she goes into, well, why not me? Who knows how to handle this better than me? Because I'm growing in faith. That's good. And because I'm growing in faith, I can conquer anything. I can overcome anything. And. You know, listening to that song and just meditating, I'm, adding, I'm going to add it to my, my song list because it was encouraging. And, you know, when I first saw it, saw it I was like, don't nobody want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I thought to myself. I don't want to hear that, and I'm going to turn my radio down. <laughs> but when, when I finally did listen to it, I'm like, okay, this is, a, this, is, this is a song that's perfect for someone who's going through who, who would say, something's always going on in my life. Something's always going bad in my life. And what it does is she turned her attitude around. That's right. That's good. That's right. I have God on my side. And if I continue to grow my faith, I can deal with anything. I can speak to anything. That's right. And I can watch it turn around. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready for the next thing that comes. <laughs> I often say that... Um any obstacle, mm -hmm. any trial is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. It is. Is an opportunity for my faith to grow, as we read in, in, in James. So I used to look at, I used to look at life happening, mm -hmm. because life is a trial. It's not a walk in the park with right. like roses. It's, it's a trial. And um, I used to look at when an obstruction or an obstacle or something would happen. Like most, my first response was like, <sighs> Yeah. Harry Not again. again. <laughs> you know, and and so, but then when you have a couple of those battles under your belt and you realize what you've become out of it mm -hmm. and how your faith really did grow. Yes. And not only did it grow, now your faith is not just for you, it's serving someone else. Ooh. Yes. So now when I get a closed door or a trial, to me, it's now, well, that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity for faith. It's just a mindset, like you even said. It's, an, it's a total attitude change. Yes. Because life is always going to throw ch challenges. Yes. It's always going to throw trials at us, because that's life. We live in a fallen world. Right. Yeah, and, and that's the, the way the devil will, act, uh, will come against you. Usually, whenever I get ready to preach or whatever, something happens. My head gets, starts hurting. Uh, it just gets stressful. It does this. And it takes me sometimes a little while to catch on. Oh, I'm about to minister. I know what's happening. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. And uh, the devil is, is, he is stupid. <laughs> 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 because he tries the same tricks. He does it every time. And he might progress to attacking a loved one or whatever when it, you, because they won't bother you no more. But I'm grown to that place. I've grown to a place where you can't come on me and expect me to say to pick up the phone or to say I can't preach. You got to pick somebody else. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because I know I know his I know his tactics. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the Holy Ghost spoke to me a years ago and he said to me, he said that the healing anointing is still on the inside of me. I got healed when I was two years old. Uh, and he said that anointing is still on the inside of me and it's my response my responsibility to stir that anointing up. That's right. And uh, so that's what I do. I, I'll just, I know I got to do something. I have to open my mouth That's right. and get upset with the devil and tell him where to go. You ain't supposed to be here. You can't, you can't, you can, tr you can try if you want to, but you are not going to win. Yeah, I had a, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I had a very unique experience. Um, and I did call your husband on this one. Um, it was a Friday, and um, we had a guest speaker coming into the church, and I was supposed to be, it was 1.30 in the afternoon, at 2 o'clock I was supposed to leave my house to go meet my husband to have lunch. And we were culminating our 21 days of prayer as a church. Mm -hmm. um, the anointing had been so strong in our services. I was so excited about Sunday. Mm -hmm. I was going to preach on the presence of God. I mean, just, I knew that God was going to move in healing, and I was so excited, right? And so it was 1.30, and I walked into the kitchen, and I was a little cold, and my daughter had some coffee going. I said, I'm going to have some coffee. Is that all right? She said, sure. Um, so I took my coffee from the kitchen. By the time I got to my bedroom, and it's, it's like a 30-second walk. Mm -hmm. I kid you not, I was in a full-on battle. Mm -hmm. My body was convulsing uncontrollably. I was freezing. Like... Mm -hmm. I couldn't sustain it, so um, my daughter put a blanket on me, I had a robe on, I had clothes, and then she threw me into bed. But this is what happened, which this had never happened to me before. I was aware I was under a spiritual attack, mm -hmm. fully aware. My body's going like shaking back and forth, and from my, from my spirit, I was praying in the spirit with such strength, even though my body was going bonkers. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I'm, I'm shaking, and I'm looking at my God, going, oh my God, my body is shaking. But the, the most intense peace mm -hmm. that I can even describe. And I was praying in the Holy Spirit with a voice. It didn't even sound like my voice. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking, oh my gosh, m the Holy Spirit is so independent of the flesh completely. Yeah. And I would go into this praying in the Spirit with such... Um, force, then into like laughter, then into like weeping, then into praying uh, in this guttural, I mean, right from here, I cannot describe it. And, and the Holy Spirit kept saying to me, this will pass, this will pass, this will pass. Like full, because you know, you're like, okay, if you're here, I'm praying in the Spirit, why am I still shaking? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and literally said, this will pass. And in that, it was about 40 minutes, in that time, he is revealing things to me mm -hmm. about revival, about holiness, about some things that he wants to do. And, and the whole time thinking, my body's shaking. I'm under attack, but yet I'm at rest and I'm hearing from God. It was the craziest mm -hmm. experience. And my daughter was there and um, she said, and, after the whole thing was over, she just started crying because she had never seen her mm -hmm. mom mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. And in her eyes, I was fighting for my life. In my eyes, I was resting. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Resting. Now, I'm going to tell you how forceful the convulsion was. My body was sore for two days. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it felt like I went to the gym, especially in here. Mm -hmm. I had gone to the gym, and I was literally sore. The next day... I slept all day. Mm -hmm. It was that, that forceful yeah. what happened to my body, but my spirit was resilient. Yes. I've never had that happen. And again, wh why did that happen? Because there's stuff that's being unleashed in our church, and I've got this prayer force going. Yeah. Enemy's not happy with it. No. But again, God turned it around for good. Why? I learned some things in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got attacked, but it was an opportunity for me to learn some things about the Spirit, 
to see how he fights our battle. I yes. was not fighting. I was not fighting. I was praying in the Holy Ghost and listening. Praying in the Holy Ghost and listening. And my body's going bananas. So never, I've not been the same since then. And yeah. that just happened about three weeks ago. Yeah. There's, there's nothing the devil can throw at you. You, yeah. are, you know that right there. Yeah. There's nothing he can throw at you that you cannot take care of. In him. Mm -hmm. And I'm so privileged. Actually, I never thought I'd ever say this, but that experience has let me see a whole other side that I was never privy to. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that would be okay. Yeah. yeah. That's just how good God is. Yes, he, he is. loves us so much that he will not let the devil take from us. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So the devil threw the kitchen sink at you, literally. Yeah. And it didn't affect you mm -mm. negatively. Mm -mm. It positively it did, it but sure not negatively. Did. Yeah. The thing is, what would have happened if I would have given up? And, and, those, and those 40 minutes were so critical. I think a lot of Christians, they, 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 they just stop short. Yes. They just stop short of getting the full manifestation of what the Lord really has. God always has manifestation for us. Always. Always. Yep, but we just give up too soon. Yeah. We need to hold on. Yeah. Hold on, hold out. <laughs> and keep moving on That's forward. Right. Because God loves us and He has He has our back. Yes, He does. He has all of us. Yeah. You know, if just get up and turn around and because He got everything on He's taking care of every part of you if you allow Him. That's it. You just have that to allow it. Him. And don't give up on God. Because he will not give up on you. That's so true. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We have fun. Yes, we do. We hope you did too. We trust that you did. So join us next week. Do not forget. And uh, stay tuned for further information. We love you. God bless you. What every Christian parent should know. Growing children up in the 21st century can be a daunting task. For Christian parents, however, it can and should be a joy to raise children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Ephesians 6.4 God has given us an instruction manual for living, His Holy Word, which includes instructions on how to raise godly children. In this book, Pastor Deborah L. Butler shares what she believes every Christian parent should know in order to raise their children in a way that's pleasing to God and that will prepare them for a future in Christ that knows no limits. Order your copy today in ebook and paperback at eStore.keithbutler.